there's always somebody there um, to talk to if I'm really needing it. They always have a duty worker that I can call. I'm very lucky that I've got a family around me, so I did not want to go into hospital. So they really, really worked hard to make sure I could stay within the community. They were just really good at sort of picking you up and putting you together to go back out into the world again. I felt safe, I felt cared for. Um, of course it's not perfect, but at the moment that I needed it, it was there. But the first thing that the councillor says is, um, I don't believe in mental health. I mean, it was a locum that I saw the first time, it was my GP I saw the second time, uh, and then I saw all sorts of different people. None of them have got the whole full history there. I wasn't able to access um, kind of crisis support so I had to go to A&E and I was kind of abandoned there very late at night. I had a psychotic episode and the crisis team came out to me to meet with me um, and I said to them oh, I think I'm going to kill myself um, but because I was smiling and being polite they were like well she's not that bad she must be all right um, whereas actually that's just a symptom of my condition so they didn't recognize that. I've been bounced backwards and forwards from GP to social worker to social worker saying you're not seeing a psychiatrist and that took over a year for me to see someone. And in the meantime I as the carer um, was so stressed that I had to find uh, support for myself mentally. And before really asking any questions he said I think you're depressed, I think you need antidepressants and I don't really know on what basis he made that decision. The waiting lists are you know, two years for just a, a basic talking therapy from your, from your GP. So when there was a critical problem, they were helpful. But at the beginning, it was, OK, let's fob him off with some tablets. But the support once you leave the hospital isn't so good. I mean, the service in general, the GPs are scared to talk to you half the time. Um, the support workers don't support you. I was actually crying out for help, and the one person who could help me didn't even pick it up or bother. And I walked away thinking, I really didn't get any help. I really didn't. So I would want more access, uh, particularly to a specialist. Most mental health patients dread going to the hospital for an appointment. It's my biggest fear. So I'd change the fact that there's not enough care in the community. A mental health A&D, that's what I'd love. You don't feel well, you go straight to that and there's people there and they'll see you then. They need to be more proactive. When I go to them saying, I'm not well, I need help, I can feel myself getting ill, they need to not say, well, we'll wait until you jump off the building before we help you. That there should be a point somewhere where anyone who first experiences a mental health problem can go for information and explanation. A range of support services and advice from GPs, absolutely critical. That's where people go first. It shouldn't be potluck that you happen to get good care, it should just be consistent across the yeah. board. That's paramount. Because we know our own bodies, we know our minds, and also I think that we know what works. Both for the service users and also for the carers. They need to listen to the experts, and the experts are usually the patients. You can save the NHS millions upon millions of pounds just by having service users at the heart of their planning. And there's no one running that service who's experienced mental health problems, then you've got a real problem. See, there's a lot of assumptions in the service about what the patient needs and wants. And that's not the way it should be. It should be them asking us, what do we need and what do we want? 